Hi, welcome to Pusher TV. In this episode, we're going to show you how to install our heater grid delete for the Cummins 6.7 liter equipped trucks. This video is intended to be an additional resource to the instructions that you'll receive with your heater grid delete. Those instructions are step by step. They have torque specs, pictures, tips and tricks, everything you need to know about the installation process. So those are definitely your number one resource for this install. In the video, we'll show you how we do things and give you a couple different angles of view just to give you that extra bit of information to make sure you get the job done right and quickly. So let's get started. So the first step to getting to your heater grid is to remove your factory manifold, which has a dipstick mounted to it. It also has six flange bolts that need to be removed, as well as a T-bolt clamp down here that needs to be loosened up. Also, there's a couple plugs on the back side for various sensors that'll need to be unplugged so you can pull the manifold up and out of your way. One of these little quarter inch impacts is really nice for small hardware, usually eight millimeter and under. It makes removal and reinstall really quick. Some of the rear flange hardware is a little hard to actually get out from back there once you loosen it. So I like to use one of these little magnet sticks and pull it out. There's also a little wiring harness clip here on the back that slips over a stud. One of these body clip pullers works really nice and pops it right off. Depending on how old your truck is, these silicone couplers here can get sticky and it'll stick to the metal parts they join. And it's really nice to be able to get a flat screwdriver in there and separate them. This heat shield's in my way, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. So now I got that out of my way, I can make sure this clamp is nice and loose, work it around. A lot of times that'll pull your factory coupler with it, pull it off the manifold. If it doesn't, I have a variety of flat screwdrivers. This particular one is bent in a 90. It helps get to certain areas where you can't get to. So you just wanna kinda go around and peel that silicone coupler off the inlet of the manifold. Once it's kind of out of there, you can also do a little twisting motion of the manifold and pull it right out. Now that we have our factory manifold out of the way, the next step is going to be to remove all of our injector lines and fuel rail. Those are all covered up by this piece of foam on the later model trucks. In order to get that out easily, we're gonna unbolt the rear mount of our dipstick tube, move it to the side, remove our two breather lines here and here. Also, we like to unplug this front injector harness plug here. Once you get all that kind of out of the way and move to the side, you can just take that piece of foam and pull it right out the front. Now that we have that piece of foam out of the way, you can really see all your injector lines and fuel rail. We're just gonna work our way from the front of the rail to the rear, removing each injector line as well as our fuel supply and return lines. I like to set each line on a cart as I remove it in the orientation and position that it came off the truck. That way when I go to reinstall everything, I'll just work from the back to the front. Having everything laid out on the cart the way it came off the truck really makes it simple to put it all back together. So we have the first four injector lines out. They're relatively easy to get to. All we use is a 19 millimeter open end wrench. As we start to get to the back and room starts to get tighter and tighter, we like to pull in this piece of uh, 
thin wall, inch and a half tube we keep around the shop. It has about a 30 degree bend here on the end. That bend in combination with the angled head on the wrench, most standard wrenches have that, give you a lot of angle combinations to get your wrench back there on the nut, however the nut is rotated and break it free. Because as you start to get back there with just a wrench, it gets a little tough. Uh, it's hard to get good leverage. Um, so these two, you know, really work well. The pipe slides right over the, the end of the wrench and gives you that breaker bar effect. Another option is crow's feet uh, and, a, and a ratcheting breaker bar. That gives you a lot of angle combinations and the leverage you need to take it all apart. And then when you go to put it all back together. So now with our injector lines out, you can see your fuel rail much easier. We're going to go ahead and remove the rest of the hardware holding the fuel rail and the heater grid to the head. Before we pull them out though, we're going to go ahead and unplug our air intake temperature sensor here as well as the rail pressure sensor at the back of the rail. So we have our fuel rail unbolted. All the bolts are out of the heater grid. I'm going to pull this dipstick to the side here, which will allow us to just pull this heater grid right out the front. You can see here all this black area is available area for air to come through the plate, but the grid blocks a good portion of that. It also hangs down below the plate, and this causes the air that needs to get to cylinders two and three that are normally right here to have to come down and underneath the grid to get to those cylinders. So it's really a very inefficient design. If you look at it next to our fully CNC'd version we're installing in place of it, the area for the air to come through is completely gasket matched. It's as big as it can be. And the underside is fully pocketed to get your plenum volume up. It's also anodized. The nice thing about that is later down the road, if you go to do some heavy degreasing of your engine bay or use some solvents or anything like that that it can attack metal, the anodizing will keep this aluminum looking this way for a really long time. It won't get chalky or milky like uh, uncoated aluminum can when you hit it with some of those heavy degreasers. So now we're getting ready for reassembly. You wanna go ahead and pull out your factory heater grid gasket. It usually doesn't leave anything behind, which is nice. You don't have to clean up any gasket pieces or whatnot off the ceiling surface. Although, when you back out your bolts that used to hold your heater grid down, the sealant on those bolts usually disintegrates and falls down into the plenum. So you wanna do a good shot back job in the plenum. And then along here, along this little edge, usually some uh, dirt buildup and whatnot. So go ahead and vacuum all that out, get it good and clean. We're ready for reassembly. We're going to start by setting our heater grid elite gasket in place in this orientation on the head. This will put this extra bit of material here in the back driver's side corner of the head. By doing this, it'll allow as much air to come through the manifold opening here as possible. And it'll also allow our air intake temperature sensor to thread through the heater grid delete plate right here. So let's go ahead and slide this gasket into position in the orientation we talked about. Get it lined up over all the bolt holes. We've already transferred over our air intake temperature sensor from our heater grid to our delete plate. It's a lot easier to do when it's on the bench. We also torque that down so it's totally ready to go. I'm gonna set this plate in place. It generally wants to slide that gasket around. So you wanna keep an eye on that. Look down into as many bolt holes as possible. Make sure everything's lined up. Then we can start putting in hardware that does not hold the fuel rail in place. That way we can get the gasket lined up underneath the plate. And then when we set the fuel rail on top of the plate, the gasket should be lined up for those bolt holes. Now we can set the supplied fuel rail standoffs in place. We're going to center them right on top of the holes that the fuel rail hardware goes into. Center that guy back up. Now I can set the fuel rail on top of those guys and bolt it down. We have our rail set in place. All the hardware is threaded in. We're just about ready to torque it down. Before you do that, you want to go around the edge of the heater grid delete plate. Make sure your gasket's not poking out anywhere. Also look down in all six of your intake manifold bolt holes. Go ahead and make sure that the gasket is centered up on those bolt holes so when you put the manifold on, you're not fighting that gasket trying to get the hardware through it. A little tip on these 13 and newer trucks is the wire that branches off the main harness and goes to this plug for your air intake temperature sensor is a little short. 
um, and the harness is pretty stiff. It doesn't really move around much. It doesn't have a lot of free play. So what we like to do is go in. Uh, the whole harness is covered in this kind of corrugated plastic shield that has a slit down the side for getting wire in and out of it. We just go peel off some of the electrical tape back there and pull some of this wire out. We pulled about three inches out here, which gives us a lot of room to get up over the injector lines once they're there and plug that in. On the 12 and older trucks, this isn't an issue. The harness is a little longer, but on these 13 and newer, it really makes it a lot easier once your injector lines are in. Speaking of which, we're going to go ahead and install those injector lines after we torque the rail down. So you can see that we've gone ahead and reinstalled all of our factory fuel lines in the reverse order they came off. Having them laid out on that cart the way I talked about really helps this reinstallation go smoothly. All of our wiring harnesses hooked up. Everything is hooked up that we took off uh, regarding the heater grid delete. You can see that I've gone ahead and installed our three and a half inch mega intake manifold instead of putting the factory one back on. This manifold is good for right at 50% more flow than the factory one. So it's a really nice thing to match up with the heater grid delete. Also, you can barely just see I put in our three and a half inch driver side charge tube there as well. That's a, also a great thing to pair up with this whole setup. It really improves the whole flow path of the whole driver side of the charge system. So we're all finished up. You can see we got that knocked out pretty fast. This thing's gonna run a lot better, a lot cooler. The customer's gonna be a lot happier with the way the truck runs now. When you finish up your install, just go over all the stuff that you worked on, make sure everything's tight, maybe go for a test drive, double check everything, and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching. There's a lot of information about this on our site. If you can't find what you're looking for or answer a question you have, we're here for you. Give us a call, shoot us an email, and thanks for watching.